Hello folks. Today I'm going to be testing the performance of the new Innovation Cooling Graphite Thermal Pads. These pads are designed to be used instead of thermal paste between the CPU and heatsink or water block. I've seen a few reports of performance out there, but not a lot so far. So I decided to do a bit of testing myself and see if it was something I would feel confident using for average builds. I figured I'd share my testing in case it helps someone else make a decision as well. I wanted to evaluate the performance from the standpoint of use with a run-of-the-mill system. I'm sure there will eventually be lots of tests of this pad uh, on overclocked, water-cooled, delitted test bench rigs. But I wanted to test for myself to see how it did in a modest system with both the stock cooler and an aftermarket air cooler. I like the idea of the thermal pad being long-lasting, reusable, less prone to application variation. I've generally had no problem with paste, but if you have trouble mounting the cooler, if you have to reposition it, or even more importantly, if you have to remove and reinstall the cooler, it's very possible to mess up the paste application and have to redo it. Um, if you don't redo it, then there's a chance you'll have poor cooling performance. Uh, again, hasn't been a real issue for me, but if the thermal pad's easy to use and offers acceptable performance on a typical modest or moderate build, uh, it might be a worthwhile option. So with that in mind, the test system I have set up uh, is a case with modest cooling. It's a Cougar QBX case with a single 120 millimeter intake fan and just the included 92 millimeter exhaust fan. Uh, the CPU I'm using is an Intel i3-8100 Coffee Lake quad core. Uh, not as difficult CPU to cool, but again, I'm not looking to see if this thermal pad will handle eight overclocked hyper threaded cores. Uh, I just want to see how it compares to paste in a fairly standard build. I don't have a video card in here right now. It isn't really needed for this testing and it's a bit easier to work in there without one. I currently have the stock Intel cooler installed with the pre-applied thermal paste. So I'll run a test with that setup first, see what kind of temps I get. Most likely if people are using the stock cooler, they're probably using the stock paste and they aren't, aren't going to spend extra on this thermal pad anyways, but I thought it'd be interesting to see how it does with the stock cooler. So once I get the numbers with the stock cooler and paste, I'll clean that off, uh, put the thermal pad on there and see what I get with that. Uh, next I'll move to an aftermarket cooler. I'll be using the Be Quiet Shadow Rock LP cooler. Uh, it's not the highest performance air cooler, but should be more than enough for the 8100. I'll first test using thermal paste. I'll be using the Arctic MX4. It's fairly popular. Uh, it's easy to work with and has a fairly well-known performance reputation. So maybe not the best, but certainly not the worst, and people generally know what to expect from it. So once I get those numbers, I'll pull the cooler back off, reinstall it with a thermal pad, and test it again. During the testing, I'll also monitor air temperature at the fan intake at the bottom of the case, uh, just to ensure there aren't any major ambient temp changes thrown off the results. Uh, and at the end, hopefully I'll have an idea of whether I'll consider using these innovation cooling thermal pads on future builds, uh, or if I'll just stick with paste. So let's get started. All right, so here's the results of the first test with the stock cooler and the pre-applied thermal paste. I'm using IDA64 for all of the testing and hardware monitor to monitor the results during the test. IDA64's sensor and temperature readings all match the hardware monitor readings, but hardware monitor is a little bit easier to get everything I want to see in one place, so that's why I'm using that. I'm going to run each test for 15 minutes, and I think that's a pretty good number because it does seem like the max temperature does not change for the last four or five minutes of the test, so I think 15 minutes is a good enough amount of time to let everything kind of stabilize and give a, a good representation of the temperatures that we're going to hit with the setup. Now there are pro stress test programs other than IDA64 which will put a lot more heat into the system, but for my testing I'm not necessarily looking to see the absolute peak temperature that we can make the CPU hit. It's more just to compare the different setups and IDA64 does produce very consistent repeatable results so that's why I'm using that. So if we take a look at the max fan speeds we hit, I did use the stock fan curve in the BIOS for all of the testing. So I'm just going to go ahead and let the fan speed react to the temperatures that we see and just see what kind of temperatures we get because this is I want this to be kind of a real world normal operation test. So we can see with this setup the peak temperature we hit was 66 degrees C and the individual core temps vary a little bit but still the max we saw was 66 uh, with then 65, 63, and 65 on the other cores. So fairly consistent results and 
not too bad at all. At least with this test on the i3-8100, the stock cooler is doing just fine with the stock pre-applied thermal compound. And with that test done, I went ahead and pulled the cooler back off, and I'll show the coverage we got here. The stock thermal compound is giving good coverage. Seems to be a good amount on there to give the proper coverage without too much. And looking at the processor heat spreader, again, good coverage, no problems there. So with that all cleaned up, ready to go, we'll go ahead and place the thermal pad and we'll get the cooler snapped back in place and run the next set of tests. All right, with the IC graphite thermal pad in place with the stock Intel cooler, you can see our temperatures were about three degrees higher across the board. Slightly higher fan temps as well, so the system is gonna be running just a touch louder. And with the exception of one core, which is four degrees hotter than in the previous testing, all the, temp all the rest of the temperatures across the board are three C hotter. So the thermal pad definitely isn't doing quite as well as the thermal paste with the stock cooler. Though it's definitely working okay and would definitely be acceptable for normal use for this computer. Though I gotta say, if I was going to be using the stock CPU cooler on a build, I probably would just use the pre-applied paste and wouldn't bother spending extra to get the thermal pad. Unless, for some reason, I was going to be pulling the cooler on and off quite a bit for some reason for uh, testing of other things. Uh, in that case, just the reusable nature and just the fact that I didn't have to clean it up all the time of the thermal pad would be nice, but uh, for typical builds, I, I don't see it being worth it. And with that pulled apart again, I'll just give you a quick look um, at the heat sink and the thermal pad uh, once I pull that stock setup back apart. Nothing too surprising, no problems. So now on to the Be Quiet cooler. So I got the brackets in place for the Be Quiet cooler, and I'm going to go ahead and apply the MX4 thermal compound. Uh, I'm a fan of just the little dab method in the middle. Uh, seems to work fine. So I'll go ahead and get the cooler installed. Uh, it's all ready to go, and we'll see what kind of results we get. Alright, so here we have the results of the testing with the Be Quiet Shadow Rock Low Profile Cooler installed with the MX4 Thermal Paste. And as you can see, the temperatures are a bit lower than the stock cooler with the paste, and the fan speeds are much lower. So this cooler is definitely doing a better job of keeping the CPU cool. Definitely runs quite a bit quieter than the stock cooler. Uh, the CPU fan speed, we're looking at 900 RPM instead of about 2200. Uh, even the chassis fans both stay at a little bit lower speed. 61C max temp hit after 15 minutes, and that was a very stable temperature. Um, it got to about 60 to 61C within about probably 5 minutes and pretty much stayed there the rest of the test. So no surprise there, working a bit better than the stock cooler, no problems at all. Now with that pulled back apart, you can see the coverage we got with that thermal paste. Uh, very good coverage, although if you look on the one side, you can see the paste is kind of built up more on one side than the other. And I think that's just due to when I install, if if one side kind of hits just a tiny bit before the other, uh, the paste kind of wants to all move to one side. But either way, good coverage, got that cleaned up, ready to put the thermal pad on. And you can see just really no more difficult than putting the paste on, just lay it on the processor, ready to go. Screw the cooler back in place, and we're good to go. And here we have the results with the Be Quiet cooler and the IC Graphite thermal pad. Fan speeds did creep up just a tiny bit compared to paste, and the temperatures also crept up just a bit, but not quite as much as they did with stock cooler. We're running about 1C hotter than we did with the paste, with the exception of one core, which is about 2C hotter than we did with the thermal paste. Now there isn't as much difference between the paste and the thermal pad on the aftermarket cooler, and if I had to guess, I would say that that is probably due to the increased clamping pressure that you can get on the aftermarket cooler. Since it has a bracket that you can actually screw down, you can get pretty good clamping pressure onto the CPU. And I can't say for sure, but my guess is that's why we're getting a little bit better heat transfer and why the temperatures only rose about one degree between the two. So fan speeds did creep up a bit, temperature crept up just a tad, but overall still working fine. Based on this, if I wanted to use the thermal pad instead of paste for one reason or another, I wouldn't have any problems doing so. So there's the results. The thermal pad gave about 3 degrees C hotter temperatures with the stock cooler, and only about 1, maybe 2 degrees C hotter with the aftermarket cooler. Definitely still acceptable temperatures. Not the thing you want to move to if you're looking for the absolute lowest temperature possible in a system, but if you like the idea of just longevity, ease of use, reusability, seems to work just fine. Uh, one quick note, 
the intake temperatures. I didn't mention it while I was showing the results, but I did have a sensor probe connected to my Fluke 568 meter right at the intake fan at the bottom of the case. And between the start and end of the first test, the intake temperatures went from about 24C to 25C, and they remained at 25C for the remainder of all the testing. Really not enough change there to have made much difference at all. So there you have it. Uh, for a stock cooler, I personally probably wouldn't use the thermal pad other than maybe a special use condition, just because it does give a tiny bit higher temperatures and just due to the cost, it's just probably not worth it. But if it was a special use case or just an, I was using an aftermarket cooler and I had some reason to really want the thermal pad over paste, uh, I wouldn't have any problem using it. Uh, it's not a miracle product. It's not going to keep up with the best thermal pastes, uh, but it does do a fine job for what it is. So hopefully you got something out of that. If you have any questions, post them up down below. As always, thank you for watching. Take care.